Um, so talking about tabletops, and the reason why we separate tabletops from bases is the fact that there, there are so many, so many applications that can happen when you talk about tabletops. Bases, the base is the one that you see the most. You know, when you go into a restaurant, indoor, outdoor, in particular, if there's tablecloth involved in it, um, you only see the, the, the table base. So that's the important part. And I jokingly say, if there is a table cloth involved, why spend more than 20 bucks on a piece of plywood, which will basically do the trick? You know, you, you just need a tabletop, you'll never see it. Um, and that's a cost saving method. So that could be the, the solution that you just add a piece of plywood to it. There is a, in a generally speaking, we, we divide it up in, in major categories. We say there's seven types of materials that we are working with, and we'll get into that as we go down the list. Um, when we um, start talking about tops, you know, there is the uh, first initial is indoor outdoor. What are we talking about here? What, what application are we, are we applying? Uh, then of course, there's the color and the style, the thickness of the edges, um, the material that can be chamfer, rounded edges, flat edges. The designers have a lot of um, a different, you know, ways of, of looking at it, approaching it. And it, it, it again goes back to how visible is this top going to be? Um, mind you, when you choose colors that the top will really decorate the space um, and, and take up a lot of surface that will be seen. So. It's an important, it's an important decision to make. Uh, let me go into further a little bit down the stretch. You know, what what are we, what is the application? Is it is it a wine bar? Is it coffee? Is it hot materials, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Will the surface, the surfaces I said before, will they be seen? You know, if they are, then it's one thing. If not, it's a different thing. Um, then into uh, when we talk about office application indoor um, very often uh, the sheen the reflection in the material is important it's important not to have reflection in particular when you're sitting in meetings and you're uh, putting papers and stuff like that on your tabletop it's it's important that you don't have any reflection uh, coming off the material so it, it doesn't blind you uh, then we're going to the the uh, the seven categories um, I'll be talking a lot about Phoenix. Phoenix is a brand under the big company called ARPA. ARPA is the equivalent, the Italian equivalent of Wilson Art, Nevermar, Formica, um, the alike. Um, and Phoenix is, is, a, uh, is a material that gives us full color pigmentation all the way through the material. Uh, in doing so, it's, it's a more expensive material, but it gives us advantages, you know, such as scratching. If you scratch into the material, you scratch into the same color. Uh, when we go to number two, solid core, it's still a, a beautiful material. It's a solid surface material, but the, it's a printed material. So it's only a surface that can't be scratched though there is there's high quality against scratch and scratching so it's it's not an easy it's not going to happen overnight you know it, it can happen over years and years and years of use that you go through the printed material the degraded part of the, the surface and you get into the soft surface which is really just holding up the top and making it stiff and rigid and spanning large surfaces etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, then in number three, we're going to what we call the ARPA laminate. Now we're talking really Wilson Art for Mike, you know, which is a laminate that is glued on to a, uh, a wood surface. Um, and you get your stability there while uh, thereby, you know, you have the ability to uh, change the thickness of the edges and it, stuff like that. And, and of course, many, many different variations in sizes. I should say that that when we, we talk about Phoenix and ARPA as our suppliers of the laminate, it's of course of the proximity uh, to the manufacturing facilities in Italy that they use the ARPA uh, laminate. Uh, we can offer 
custom sizing, custom laminate. So if there is a, a diehard interior designer completely locked in on a Wilson art finish, well, we can do it. Let's talk about it. But initially I would say we focus on what we have in the price book because that's the easiest thing to do, uh, but we can, uh, we can accommodate. We can also accommodate on sizing. Uh, so two top, four top, which is a very common term here in the United States, not so common in Europe. They like squares and rounds and, and they, they don't focus so much on, on the two and four tops as we do. But I've had several situations where we have manufactured uh, both in Phoenix or in solid core materials tops for other people's bases. So now we're talking custom, custom, the quantities get up a little bit there, uh, but it's doable. Uh, the only thing we have then that we need to discuss is a product liability when you have connections made by others or connected made by us connected to their bases. It, it opens a whole new can of worms, you know, but uh, it, it's doable. Um, then we go down the list and we have natural wood, you know, natural wood can include teak. Um, steel can be, you know, many different things, but for the most part, it is a powder coated top and then glass and finally stone. So Phoenix, um, as I said, is a brain on the archer and Phoenix is a, is, is a material that uh, offer, first and foremost, what is called nanotech. Um, nanotech is a beautiful, beautiful material that we'll learn more about. Then uh, nanotech with ply core, and then we go into what is called marble effect, and finally the printed laminate. So first, uh, let's talk about the nanotech. Uh, nanotech, hence the word uh, nano, is, is millions and millions. So it's it's a it's a very very dense material. It it's a beautiful. It has a beautiful feel to it. It's kind of like a silk like feel. Um, it, it can be controlled in very very thin. Uh, thicknesses. As you see here, we, we go all the way down to a quarter inch, quarters of three eighths. So you have tabletops balanced quarters of three eighths. It gives the table elegance uh, that you can uh, operate with a, a tabletop that thin. And over large spans, you know, we can we can go all the way up to the large tabletops, you know, that go uh, 10, 12 feet, you know, and, and it can still be controlled with a soft frame. As I said, uh, the material has extreme density to it. Um, the matte surface uh, that is no glare, uh, so it, it has that silk feel when you actually to the touch, it feels soft and warm. Um, it has a very high tolerance to uh, heat, so uh, warm plates, uh, kitchen, anything like that is, is okay. And it has the quality of what we call anti-fingerprint. So when you when you touch the surface, it does not it, it, your your uh, finger releases you know grease we say or or oils better word um, it won't stick to the material, and that's that's really a, a remarkable feature when you go into office settings and, and uh, you you don't have you don't have fingerprints all over the surface, and then uh, because of the density of the material. It is very, very resistant to uh, stains, such as wine, coffee, uh, you know, spicy foods, et cetera, et cetera, sitting on the surface. It's not so much uh, anything put on a surface that is wiped off right away, but it's a coffee cup sitting on the tabletop overnight or maybe two or three days. A red wine glass, you know, with a little ring around it will, in, in, in the regular application, will mark the material forever. And it's just not, it's not going to go away. But the Phoenix nanotech, the, the density of the material is so dense that there is no, there's, there's just no staining going on in the material. It's a very beautiful material to work with. It's a little bit costly as well. It's probably the, or it is after class, it is the, the costliest material we have. It is a uh, material that's uh, <clears throat> great for uh, indoor application. Uh, and as uh, it's, it's there, we, we get into the outdoor a little bit later, but this Phoenix Nanotech is only an indoor material. And it's, it's uh, primarily offered in the darker shades like 
dark gray and the blacks. Uh, and black, as we all know, does not work with outdoor. It's just not a material that, that work outdoor because of the heat uh, transferred by UV and sun uh, can really, really bring the material up to temperatures that can give you third degree burns. If you have a tabletop that is super dark in, 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 in areas where the sun is, is predominant, the Arizona, the desert as well, the south in the summer as well. Um, as you can see in the sizing, you know, we, we start with the smaller ones, which is coffee table, a cafe, anything round up to a 50 and a three quarter inch. Uh, in square, it's the same uh, number, 53 quarter. And then to the conference tables, uh, four feet by, by 12 feet, which is what be 48, 144. So very close to that. Those are the cut sizes. The, the sheet actually come in four by eight, but because of cutting edges and shaving edges, we lose a little bit there. So the maximum sizes we can bring up will be 47, 142. Um, we then talk a little bit about what bases can it be applied to? Uh, well, the nanotech can really be applied to anything, anything where you, you want to see elegance. Uh, so the lashes, the stylus, you know, it, it goes down the list. We have what? 70, 70 bases in production. So there's uh, plenty to choose from. Uh, and if you want that elegance in the, uh, in the tabletop, the Phoenix Nanotech is really a beautiful material to work in. Um, the same material, uh, if we go into a ply core. So the ply core is just the, the material, the sub material is not plywood. So it's the, the Nanotech is applied to the top of the plywood and it gives you that natural feel of the edge, uh, plywood edge. Um, and it, it's a, um, it's, it has all the same qualities uh, as the, uh, the nanotech full color pigmentation. Uh, it's just a, a way different feel on the edge, you know, so it's, it's really cool in conference tables, uh, larger conference tables. Um, in, in bar areas, in, in lounge areas, where you want that little added feature of, uh, of the plywood that's a water-based plywood. And of course, FSC certified, you know, uh, guess what? You know, they, they're all FSC certified. Doesn't matter what would come out of the Italian factories, they're all FSC certified, which is Forest Stewardship Council. So it's a, it's a controlled manned, controlled forest, you know, they basically grow trees like you grow corn in a field. You know, it's, it's, it's you cut a tree, you plant a tree, you cut a tree, you plant a tree, that's a forest stewardship council. Um, so it's, it's an interesting material to, uh, to operate with here. You see an example of the, uh, the ply core. It's a half inch thickness material. Uh, so it, it uh, presents itself uh, really elegant. Uh, and as I said before, it has all these features of the zero glare, anti-fingerprint, density in color, and, and, and all that. A little bit about where we put those, uh, those tabletops on. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the Archie, the Archie conference table is, um, I think it's fair to say that it's one of the least expensive conference tables um, of, of size. Uh, all the way up to 12 feet, four by 12 feet. You know, you look, you find tables like that in, in the 1900, 2000, 21, $2,400 range, which is really incredible. That's an incredible deal for a table that is very, very sturdy. Uh, it's, a, it's a steel frame that is then supported by a, a cast aluminum, extruded aluminum, sorry, not cast, but extruded aluminum frame that forms the etch and then you apply the top, as you can see here, they could be the pie core. And you have a beautiful table that is very elegant. It doesn't take anything away from the room and it really becomes the chair sitting around the table that determines what look you want to present in the room. You know, it can be the task chair, it can be any chair, upholster, the back tilt, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but back to the price of the table, you know, a, a conference table that's 12 feet by four feet at two grand. That's really it's uh, that's that's a remarkable price, so you can uh, you can use that a lot. 
Um, then we go into a Phoenix as what we call marble effect. The marble effect is unique and exclusive to Pedrali. Pedrali uh, developed this product here together with Arca and they have the rights to the product. Um, I have used it in a couple of installations. We did a, an installation in, in upstate New York uh, last year and we use uh, this material here for all their conference tables. Uh, it's a dental school, so they have chemicals involved in presentations, et cetera, et cetera. And that's one of the beauties of this product here, chemically resistant. It is a surface that has a ceramic feel to it. So it's not, it isn't, it, it kind of has the stone texture. It's not a completely flat surface. Uh, it reminds you a little bit of a, a, a natural marble and it has the veins and the structures in it. And they, they use very, very large films when they print the material. So you don't feel repetition in it. It, it has that same feel as natural stone where you, well, you find all kinds of prints in natural stone. You, it, it's hard to send a sample out of a natural stone piece because whatever you sent out for approval is guaranteed not to be what they receive. And so it's, it's actually dangerous when people, they start asking for samples of marble tops. And, and the same thing with a marble effect is that, please be aware, you know, this is not representing the product that you're gonna see at the very end. It'll be very, very different. Uh, but this material is strong. It is uh, great for restaurants, it's great for food. Uh, it's great for wine bars. There is absolutely zero penetration of, of any stains whatsoever, coffee, wine. So it's a very, very strong surface. It has the three edge thickness, has the same effect of balancing, you know, the same qualities of balancing over large spans of tabletops. Um, so it's, it's all in all, it's a, it's a fantastic material. Uh, the only thing, as I said, we have to bear in mind, only Pedrali. Uh, no Escap, no Alma, and no Dragati. They, they do not carry the product. So um, I have uh, had success with buying the tops only from Pedrali. They have allowed us to do that. Um, so we, but it's something that we have to talk about, you know, just give me a shout, you know, what your project and the sizes and all this and, and see if we can carry the product onto other people's bases. Um, it has been done but it's kind of like something that we don't talk loud about. Um, so here's an example of the top. You can see how much different structures there are in, in, uh, in the material. It, it really is the marble look alike, uh, but because it is a composite marble, you get a white core and the veins don't go all the way through, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's obvious when you see the material that it's a, it's a it's a man-made uh, and not a ask a question, Vito? Yes, you can. Um, you know, one question I do have is sometimes designers want marble, but they don't want the inconsistency uh -huh. of the look. So the Phoenix marble is different than the composite marble. It's an actual, or is it composite versus printed marble? And does it give a more consistent look for designers? <sighs> I don't know if everybody... No, I, um, I get, one I question get. I just asked just for everybody here is about designers wanting a consistent look. You know, sometimes they want marble, but they don't want the table because marble is a natural product as we'll go through. It doesn't have a consistent design look. It can, you can get a dark top, a light top. Um, and so I just wanted Vigo to explain a little bit more about how this is a little bit different and the difference between this and composite marble, which we will go into later. Yeah. It's because they, because of the print, they, they actually seek to make it not repeat itself. And if you want repetition, you want the colors to be the same. And if you want the design of the top to be the same, this is not the material. It's just really signaling, it's sending a signal of, of a lot of diversity in, in, this, in the material. They want it to look like stone. Um, but when you look at the edge, it's clear that it's not. Uh, the beauty of this material, as you get the marble effect, is zero stain. It's fairly low glare, but there's no staining going on. And the fact that it's chemical resistance, resistant, it, it, is, it is just a beautiful material to work in. Um, 
Okay, here we go. Onto the same uh, marble effect, but in the darker. Uh, there is there is uh, one more color that we have not shown, but it's kind of like a dark green uh, material. Um, same qualities, same elegant thickness, uh, thinness, I should say, to the edge. And uh, the material they try to operate with core materials that speaks to the top, so you don't see white on black and black on white. Um, Here's a couple of examples of uh, tables that have uh, that have uh, the material on it. The, the Rhino uh, base uh, by SCAP and the Jump table, uh, which is a uh, stacking table. So it's an outdoor application. Uh, in both of these tables here, the material uh, marble effect is an outdoor material that can be used anywhere. Uh, but this, the Jump table is a stacking table, stacks up to 10 high. Uh, so it's it's and it's very easy to to move. You can kind of see those little plastic inserts that are sitting underneath the table frame here. That will protect the tabletop from the next tabletop as you stack them. Uh, now Phoenix uh, Phoenix laminate over particle board. And it's just, that's kind of like now we're talking the, the probably the material we all know and we have known uh, for to be used for tabletops and vertical panels, anything application going into buildings today. Uh, laminate or particle board. So the thickness of the laminate is 130 seconds. Uh, very thin, uh, you would say, but because of the glue application to a particle board that has uh, great qualities for flatness, you get a surface that is very, very strong and, and can take a beating. Uh, it gets a little bit if you want to get to the edges, but uh, it, it is what it is. You know, we know the material we've been working with for years and years. Um, we offer it in three quarter inch, one one eighth, and a two inch. On the uh, two inch edge, it is actually a drop edge. So it's an edge that has been added to the three quarter inch material. So you don't, um, you don't raise the height of the table by adding a two inch uh, tabletop to it or tabletop to it. Uh, because in the one and one eighth, we actually do add to the height of the table uh, where your table base is one, you add the three quarter to it, there's your finished height, that will be 29. In the one one eighth, it's actually 29 three eighths. So it's, it's adding a little bit to the height of the table, but back to the two inch edge, it's not adding any height to it. The two inch edge is primarily used for coffee tables, you know, where you, you lower your, your tabletop and you, you want to add some substance to the edge. Um, so that's that primarily where the two inch edge is used. It's, it's really used on the, on the dining tabletops. Uh, this material is strictly indoor and that has to do with the particle board, of course, particle board, um, kind of loves moisture, it loves water, but uh, as soon as it gets in contact, extended contact with water and moisture, swelling happens and you are done. I mean, that tabletop can never, ever, ever be repaired again. So anytime you see in restaurants where uh, the etching has left a little bit, has dislodged from the tabletop, uh, you start seeing swelling, well, you're done. That tabletop needs to go and you have to replace it uh, with something that is maybe made a little bit better, you know, where this, the edge will not separate from the top. Um, and I have a, a good example of that, you know, and, and uh, it's, uh, it was my initial approach with, um, with uh, Wahoo's Fish Tackle. I was sitting there with my kids one Saturday afternoon in Laguna Beach and, and uh, I noticed a little crack in the tabletop and I, I sort of pushed a little bit on it and some gooey stuff came out of the crack and we were like, oh my, this is, this is so not good, you know. This it can't be good for the health department that you actually have separation in the tabletop and, and food that is dislodged and there's a little crack in there. So when I come home that night, I um, got online and wrote a, an email to uh, the owner of, of, uh, of uh, Wahoo's Fish Tago and, and said that he's, uh, he's, his plays reminded me about cinnamon and sadness. Uh, which is a quote that I can't take credit for myself, but actually Crystal's oldest son, 
he came up with that one day and it's just just i mean that's a that's a really really sad description of a situation you walk into cinnamon and sadness but i used that and he came back uh, the next day and and said that was the best critique he had ever been offered on on the web page so here we are fast forward a year and a half later we are in a program where we are replacing all their tabletops in all 60 restaurants, each restaurant with about 60, um, 60 tables. So figure that out, 3,600 tables later. And we're doing all the chairs as well. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it turned out to be a, a productive working lunch uh, that actually started on the beach this morning. And, and well, there you go. So tabletops, pay attention to it. When you see it in, in uh, wine bars and coffee houses and restaurants, I drop a note. I say, look guys, this is not good. It's just, just this is what I see and it can't, all other people see the same thing. So we can replace tabletops. We don't have to touch the bases. If the bases are good, we don't have to do it. Um, we have uh, in the laminate, what, what is called oil particle board, we have a couple of edge solutions I wanna to talk to you about. One is self-edge. Self-edge is laminate that is applied to the edge. And it's, it's a heat application that is very, very strong. Um, and I have in uh, all the years we have been promoting the brands that we're working with, never seen edges come off. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's just a, a, a really good, strong application. And we then have other edge options like brass and aluminum. Um, and these are just new featured edges. They are PVC edges that are rolled on. They're three millimeter. Um, so about a 16th, uh, a little bit over a 16th of an inch. They're strong edges to give us a different look. Uh, and then once we get the edge on, we can pair it with different bases like the gold and brass and bronze bases we have in the collection. Um, and it gives us the, the same span in, in uh, sizes. Uh, we start with the smallest round, which is 19 and a quarter, and we go all the way up to, you know, the 12 foot, the 12 foot conference table. Here's an example of uh, the edges, um, where you see the edge that's the on the left hand side is a self etch, which is the laminate. So you only have one seam at some point in it on the square. Of course, you have seams on the, all the corners, uh, and then we have a brass. Uh, application on the uh, the right hand side uh, which is has become really popular and here's an example of the icon base with a uh, a, um, a a it's called a phoenix so the phoenix the, the phoenix laminate the phoenix nanotech laminate has color pigmentation all the way through the 130 seconds so you see no black seam on this tabletop here the two laminates are meeting in a full, full color pigment, white or black, uh, and you have no seam. When you start printing the material onto the, the laminate, you get a dark brown seam, as you are very familiar with, I'm sure. Vigo, can you address, uh, Patricia, like to know what's the minimum quantity and lead time? I know there's no minimum quantity, but lead times might be a good thing. That is correct. Yes, um, there's no minimum quantity. Well, there is. It's one. You have to buy one, otherwise, you can't do it. Um, so, yes, one is uh, the minimum on it. Uh, and there are, no, there are no restrictions on sizes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, very often on the uh, on the most popular laminates, they have them in stock. They have them in stocks and sizes. Um, uh, I wanna say two handfuls of sizes and laminates are what we call the one week lead time. The one week lead time is, bear me with me now, is out of the factory. Uh, so then we have the shipping, uh, shipping on top of that. And shipping of course is related to container volume. How often do we go? How much product do we have? And, when do we fill the container and close the door and build on the next one? Uh, so anywhere from five to six, we can uh, we can have product here in the United States in five to six. In particular, in, in larger quantities, uh, Pedrali has their own manufacturing of tabletops. So when we go to the factory one of these days, when we have time to uh, travel to Italy, you will see it's it's one of the 
most impressive manufacturing facilities. It is, it is really, truly, completely without anybody inside. It's, it's all computer control. The computers will go and grab the sheets and bring them to the CNC machine, um, drop the edges, whatever, and, and the, the, the machine recognizes your order. So it has a SKU number attached to the tabletop and it travels back into the warehouse when it's all done. It, it's done in a matter of minutes. It, it's really an impressive um, uh, manufacturing facility they have there. And it picks the tools, drop the edges, turn the tabletop around, drop the hardware into the tabletop. And once we have that established, then we have a product that is warranted and product liability secured because we take care of the hardware in the tabletops and also the table bases underneath. So you have a product that is 100% covered by warranty. It's, it's a sales argument that I, I use a lot when I get in front of customers. Be aware, when you do your own tabletops, we step back. We only sell you the base. So we don't know what connection we're talking with here. We don't know if you choose to stay within the overturning criteria that we have established for this table base here. We don't know if they do that. So it's, there's, there's a liability issue that ends up with the manufacturer, which in a, in a really become the customer him or herself. If they buy tops from somebody and bases from somebody else, they're the manufacturer because they put them together. So um, lead time, five, six, seven, five, six, seven weeks. Um, it, 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 it usually it drives whatever chairs you have in there. The chairs are usually the ones that are a little bit longer than the, the table bases and the table tops. And um, we like to ship everything at the same time, you know? So of course, when you have a poster seating, you start hitting the 10 to 12 weeks, you know, because production time for anything upholstered is five, five weeks, which is actually quick, you know, but it's, it, I know in this world here of um, instant gratification, we, we want our restaurants tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's not, I don't think there's a day that go by here in my office where I don't get the call about what do you have in stock? What can you deliver today? I need it next week. We have a restaurant opening on Tuesday. We forgot to buy chairs. Wow, that's impressive. We forgot to get the fryer and two, and, and you can't make French fries. No, we have that, you know, but it's just the tables and chairs we forgot about. <laughs> it's it's just like it's amazing. But it happens all the time. So we we're starting to think in those in those lanes, Patricia, that where we we gotta have we gotta have stuff that we can get here quickly. And in one of the one of my thoughts and this I know it's, it's, it's not so much tabletop related but everything related is uh, to focus on a port of entry here in the United States that will give us a, uh, a an expedited handling. Uh, Houston is one of them uh, probably the one that is closest uh, to my uh, evaluating the whole situation. Houston is, is a very fast harbor to work in and it's inexpensive and it gives everybody access to, um, to the state of Texas and good fair amount of distribution, all of the United States, but it's, it's a different uh, scenario we can talk about later. Uh, then we, we start talking about the solid core. Now, the material, the core material is the same as the Phoenix Nanotech. It's the same material, but it is a printed surface. So your color pigmentation stops right there at the surface. If you scratch it, you have a problem. You get a problem into it because it's gonna show whatever color you have below it. And they're usually brown or black. Uh, the, the core materials are brown or black. We, you can see it in the price book, you know, what we, we deal with here. Um, but it's a less expensive material and it really does the same job except for the no glare, no fingerprint. No glare, no fingerprint. That's a nanotech quality that nobody else can repeat. Um, and you are in your presentation to your customers, you are pretty much alone. There's nobody else using that material as uh, Pedrali and SCAP they use. Laminate and printed materials. Um, so the um, now we're stepping into materials that are both outdoor and indoor. Um, so there's a lot more versatility in an outdoor chair table, of course, can be used indoor. And, and if they have 
the tables indoor and outdoor. Uh, don't worry about the mix and match, you know, just do everything outdoor. Uh, so you don't have to worry about tables that were indoor one day is gonna end up outdoor and be ruined. It, it's, I just go outdoor and everything so they don't have to worry about it. It has the same beautiful edge of a three eighths to half inch thickness. Uh, so it's a very dense, very controllable material. Um, it has, I say, low reflection, um, which is reducing the glass. You no know, glares. I, I maybe I miss, you know, I missed that word. You know, I should have said not so much glare, but it is low reflection. It and it's heat resistant as well. Uh, it's it's a great product even for scratches. You know, it, it, the only problem is when if you scratch a deep scratch, you're scratching into something that has a color that is deeper down into the material. If it's black or brown, well, you're gonna see it. Um, then we work on edges. They can be bullnose, they can be flat, they are flat, they can be chamfered. Um, the sizes are in this material here, a little bit restricted on the bigger sizes. You see we go up to 63, 31 in the rectangulars, um, whereas the nanotech can go all the way up to the 12 feet. It, it's just that the density of the material is a little bit different but the cost is also a lot of it different. So it's, it's, it's a material that is way more, um, the solid layman here, color core printed is the material that we sell the most. Uh, there's just no, no question about it. It's, it, um, it's uh, the nanotech is in certain applications and uh, cost prohibitive. But you still have uh, in the blacks and the whites, you have what we call the, the full core color. Uh, in this material here. So the surface is a printed material, but you print on top of white. So you get into white if you wear through or should have uh, an accident where you, you scratch the tabletop. The printed surfaces uh, give us a lot of flexibility in colors. You, you, you can go in the price book and you can see in the back how many different colors we have. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, like two dozens, stuff like that. Um, then we do the stone, we do the, the wood uh, look alike, um, and there is both oak and beech and birch and you know and different uh, wood species that can be applied to the top and then the stone uh, top that has its own little character. Here's a couple of uh, pictures of where these tops can go. Uh, Liberty with a solid black. Um, Actually, is a retro. It's, it's probably one of the more. No, it is a, a very, very uh, popular uh, table base that Liberty base that has so many years on it. Probably sixty. You know, it's 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 really it's been around forever. That and the Bistrot, those two bases are. They speak Paris cafes. You know, you put a marble top on that one on the left here. The Liberty is it's just a whole new elegance. Um, ice uh, is Alma, um, also manufactured by Pedrali called Icon. Uh, outdoor, inexpensive, um, elegant, very symmetrical. Uh, when you have uh, several of them uh, sitting with bolt chairs, era chairs, it's, it's just, it's very simple. It's, it's eye-catching, it's inviting. Um, it creates that, that wow look that I, I try to, to work around when we uh, when we have customers come to us, I want to help them create something that brings memories, you know, that you remember you went into this restaurant. The first, the first impression you get when you walk into the restaurant or into an outdoor seating area is that's your furniture. I mean, if it's, can you imagine if you're in a restaurant, restaurant owner, you're up one before people that are even greeted, before they even see the wine list, before they see the menu, they already have this feel of, wow, this is interesting. This is different. This is, this is what I want to be in. I want to sit here. I want to take pictures and send it to my friends. Uh, so that's, that's the creation we have to cater towards all of us when we sell this furniture. Um, it, it's, it's, it's love hate, you know, it's, it's, it's love when you see it and you like it, you will buy it because the price is right. If this is not what you're looking for, you will very likely have an architect sell. Eh, it's kind of not what I was looking for. Okay, that's good. I like the message sooner than, than later. Uh, Archie printed wood on the right hand side is a, so now you have the black core um, with the wood print on top. 
it has elegance to it. I use it in uh, education facilities, uh, uh, conference rooms. It can be used in cafeterias. It can be used uh, in many, many different applications um, with the printer. Now back to uh, laminate on particle board. So laminate on particle board is where we go. We call it ARPA. ARPA is Wilson Art Nevermore uh, for MICA. That's the material, but as I said, it's coming out. The proximity to the manufacturing facility is an inexpensive product, doesn't pay to send it all over the world, even though they do have representation here in the United States. Uh, so we can get the material uh, and we can make uh, the two tops and the four tops locally. Uh, so bear that in mind, if, if you don't see the sizes in the price book that is driving the business or the, the, the restaurant uh, talk to us, ask us about it. You know, we, we, as I said earlier, we do cater to what would be a custom size. There is no upcharge for it. Um, so it's a two top is typically a 24 white 30 deep, giving you a space of 24, 15 for one person. And uh, in Europe, they would call that 30, 30, you know, so, but here in this world, we lose six inches of the space for people, which is not good down the stretch. You know, if you have 10 tables, that's 60 inches. So you lose four, you lose four positions. Uh, you can't do that. So the two top and the four top here is very popular. And of course, a term that we deal with a lot. Um, but we can do it in both in, uh, in all the materials that we have gone through here. So the RPEP brand is... Uh, Laminate over particle, but as I mentioned earlier, is indoor only. Uh, wood grain, stone invitation, matte surface, low glare, minimum staining, and the brass and PVC edges that I mentioned before. So it's just kind of like repeating myself a little bit. The laminate self edge in, uh, in different colors, you can see uh, kind of like the stone rustic. Uh, it's a good feel, it, it's, a, it's a good looking product, um, both in the three quarter and, and one and one eighth. Um, and the uh, precision of the manufacturing, because it's all CNC, is absolutely impeccable. Uh, I, when, you, when you see tops, uh, laminated tops from our factories, uh, it is just a high quality product. And it shows. Um, I have, um, actually we have several, of course we have several tabletops. And, and I actually encourage you when you go in front of architects, uh, get a top from us. We'll, we'll send you a top or two and you can have it in your arsenal of things to bring with you out there uh, to show architects because it really shows the quality of the product. It's very, very high end at no added cost. They, it's just high end because they're using the best machinery in the manufacturing. It's all CNC. Precision of CNC is within a thousand. You know, it's, it's it's dead on, you know, when, when you make something with CNC manufacturing capabilities, that's it, you know, you make a thousand of it, the, the product number 1000 comes out exactly the same as, as the product number one. Very impressive. Um, we make tops uh, for indoor use only, of course, uh, as a plywood edge. So the plywood edge is about an inch thick and is glued onto the particle board and then finished in the reverse uh, drop or a bull nose or flat edge. Um, it's a um, fun application to, uh, to add to the laminate. The lamb, of course, has all these different colors that you know from the price book, but the plywood edge gives it a, a different feel. Um, so that's one of them. And then we go in and we have uh, etching materials such as chrome. Um, chrome, aluminum, brass, uh, the edge is actually a PVC edge, but it is a really, really good lookalike. I mean, it's, it, it gives you that feel of um, 60s, you know, the steel edges are the 60s and the 70s, and, and a lot of restaurants like it, you know, to bring that retro back into uh, to the business. Uh, there's no upcharge, you know, for the edge banding or, or applying that edge over a self-edge, it's, it's the same price, you know, so it's just a different feel. Um, so it's, it, that's something you should bear in mind, you know, playing with the edges uh, together with your designers. That's like the bistro table from Paris, you know, way back, uh, as it goes actually back in the 50s, and now has become popular again. It's a PVC edge rolled on, and uh, 
it, it gives uh, gives the whole restaurant a different a different feel. Here we go the uh, the laminate with the uh, uh, marble top. So this edge here, the brass edge with the brass bases uh, that are available in Inox, uh, Tiffany, uh, you know, a couple of others have the the crossover into those materials, and and they're just they're just very very popular right now. Uh, and both the Tiffany and the Inox base has the ability to change over time, if you want to replace the copper that goes over the base of the of the Inox and Tiffany base, you can do so. And so you can actually have a two-tone base. You can have the stem being one color and the base cover being a different color, which is something that I've played with uh, in a couple of situations. Uh, so bring that to the attention of the designers that you can actually two-tone a base. But if you do so, you are alone. There is nobody else that can chase you down. Nobody else is doing that but us. A couple of uh, pictures of um, the inox with the laminated wood effect. You know, the edge banding is the same as the top, but it's all self edge laminate. And here you see the two inch drop edge, you know, so it's, it, it gives the, the table a little bit more substance. Uh, the two inch drop with the square tube uh, looks really good. You know, it's just, it's, you know, we, we, we try to keep the bases and the column uh, in style with what is going on the top. So you see the round column on the right hand side with the rounded corners. Uh, so the two speak the same design language. Whereas if you have a, a on the left, you have a square edges, square square column and a square base on the floor as well. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it speaks the same language. Wood veneer, antique. Um, I paired the two into one category um, as it kind of falls in the same category. It's, it's all the FSC certification uh, for Stewardship Council, which is uh, mandated uh, by all of the European manufacturers. So it's, it's not something that's entirely unique to, uh, to our manufacturers. They're mandated to only operate with FSC. So it's uh, <clears throat> when we go to China that they drop it and they don't really you know, care that much about it. So it, 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 the product is less expensive. Typically uh, products that are not FSC certified uh, carry a, a lesser density uh, because they're so enamored by cutting oak trees. No, not oak trees, but the uh, mahogany antique that's only 15, 20 years old. Uh, so they're, they're in a hurry to get wood, you know, so it's, it's, that's what you get when you cut trees that young, uh, the density of the wood is just, it's shot, you know, and you get a product that is really soft and, and, um, and not a very good product. FSC certification secure that you only work with mature trees and uh, the density of the wood is, is really good and um, it's a product that can work as table surfaces. Even a veneer table surface like you see in the Clint table by uh, Alma, um, which by the way is a beautiful table. I mean, you, you, whichever angle you look at it, you, you get a new perspective of the table. It gets a different look wherever you look at it from. Uh, but the veneer uh, is uh, 1 64th of an inch. So people go like, whoa, 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 that's it's not a problem, you know? No, as a matter of fact, it's the other way around. The thinner the veneer, the closer the wood is to the glue surface and the glue surface is what determines the strength of the veneer. So the thinner the veneer is, the stronger it is. 164th, perfect. You're close to the particle board, you're close to the glue lines. And if it's uh, applied with a heat process, you, you create a surface that is very, very strong and can be used as a tabletop, dining tabletop, as we see here. Um, smooth finish, water-based lacquers. That's again, it's one of those, oh, that's a given. You know, we, we don't use uh, VC or, or what is it called? The emission from the VCO, right? It's called zero emission of that from the factories over there. It's all water-based and the water-based lacquers has come a long way since they were introduced about 20 years ago, uh, where they were not as strong as, as the, the uh, artificially curing processes. Uh, but wood indoor only, 
course, uh, all particle boards, so it's indoor, uh, small table, dining tables, um, bar tables, bar tops, yes. Um, I see it, I see it in hotels, I see it in hotel lobbies. We see it in hotel rooms, we see uh, you know, a little coffee table in front of the, the lounge chair in the hotel room, uh, so the coffee table right there. Uh, it, it doesn't go, it doesn't span the bigger surfaces because it's, it's what we call rift cut. Um, that means that the, uh, the structure or the veins in the, in the veneer is uniform. You don't see veins in the wood as such. It's a rift cut. It's giving you that uh, very, very uniform look of the table. And because of the veneers, when they're paired together, when they, they, they glue them up, um, you, you don't see the seam in the wood as well. It's, um, it's a, it's, it creates a beautiful product. It's a very uniform look. Um, and you can see, as I, I say, paired with Clint, Clint's beautiful table, it's a dining table, it's, it's very beautiful. Inox, very popular. Tiffany, very popular. Those are the two the highest selling bases we have in production, Inox and Tiffany. It's just their workhorses and they're inexpensive. They can do a lot and they can play with a, different, a lot of different surfaces. Here you see the application in the veneer. Um, so we we have an edge that is um, almost one eighth of an inch thick in the edge banding procedure or application. So it uh, has added durability to it. The veneer uh, is overlaying the edge over the top. So when you sand the corner, you break the corner 22 and a half degrees, which is typical uh, for wood manufacturing, you see nothing but wood. It, it, it presents itself as if it was a solid piece of wood, you know, looking at on, on the left hand side, it kind of looks, but when you have end grain, well, that's a giveaway. You can see that it's a, it's a veneer particle board, but it's, it's high quality material that we work with. Here it is in a uh, application in a restaurant in a stain. Uh, when we stain, water stain, uh, the, the, it is not, it's not what is called a wipe stain. It's a spray on stain. So the stain goes deep into the wood. The wood is completely untreated and raw when it hits the staining process. And when you apply water-based stains to a veneer, it gives full penetration, which uh, again has to do with uh, possible future scratching of the tabletop. If you scratch the tabletop and the, the scratch is not too deep, well, you're scratching into more color pigment. So you won't see uh, as if you wipe the stain on, it, it only attaches itself to the surface. It's a lesser expensive production method, a method that is uh, seen out of small factories. Um, and it's, it's, just, it's just a manufacturing uh, method, you know, that the larger factories can deal with because they have the equipment and make the investments to do it. Uh, but it is a far superior, um, a product that you get out of it, that there's full penetration of the stain through the lamb or through the veneer to the core material. See what I talked about before, you know, we have the square bases with the square tops. It's kind of like that design language that we, we try to speak. Wood, um, cheek, FSC certified, uh, coming out of Indonesia. Um, and it's a, it's a uh, manufacturing or it's a growth facility that Pedrali has been working with for 10, 12 years now. And, and they, they replant all the time. Uh, their, their cheeks are typically about uh, 20, 23 years old when, when harvested, um, which is when the, the tree and the wood starts maturing to the point where you have enough density. And you can, you can easily detect that when you go in a restaurant, you see a cheek surface that is splitting, breaking, uh, warping. We're talking about trees that are eight to 10 years old. That, it's simple as that, you know, they can't, they're not controlled yet in, in the structure of the wood. Um, but the proper growing of cheek is, is a beautiful, beautiful outdoor product. It's of course we say weather resistant, it's, it's primarily UV. It's not so much the rain, rain, forget about that. That's, that doesn't do anything to the wood, it actually likes it. It's the UV, it's the constant baking under the sun that will eventually break down the product over years and years and years. Um, annual use of uh, oil, you know, teak oil is recommendable. It, it keeps the product beautiful. 
before you do so, you can actually high pressure wash the tabletop and get all the stains up before you apply the oil. Uh, but that's maintenance. And a lot of times uh, restaurants don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear, what do I have to do? I have to take my tables out of commission for a day. Well, yeah, if you want to keep them beautiful, that's what you have to do. Uh, but if you do, then you have a product that will last a lifetime. If you don't, you have a product that will last eight to 10 years. The sun will eat it up. And uh, that's the end of it. Once it doesn't look good anymore and you start having cracks in it, it's not a usable surface for restaurant and dining. Uh, you can't clean it anymore. And uh, it's kind of like the end of that, you know. So, but it's, it's beautiful for outdoor cafe, restaurant, dining, wine bars, cafe, juice bar. Um, it, it, it does not give you, unless you oil, 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 um, the uh, stain resistance. Uh, so when you see teak surfaces that over the time, over time has matured, you know, you see the stains, you know, you see the ring of the wine glass from a couple of years prior. Well, it's going to be there. That's that's a, that's a product that is maturing. You know, I keep I keep referencing that in marble tops when we go to Paris. You know, you see all these cafes with beautiful tabletops that are sixty years old, and they have so much personality, so much style. You know, in, in the fact that they're they're just wearing with the people that are sitting around them. You know, and, and not so much worried about that we can't have a ring from a, a wine glass. Well, you can if you. If you think that's how the table should look, you know, but in this one here, it is certainly not stain resistant and to any degree it's uh, but it's an outdoor uh, product. It's very well priced. I think you will find, you know, if you dive into the price book, you will see the cheap tops that can be paired with any of the outdoor bases uh, we have mentioned here. Uh, Bold, which is a very popular Nemo top. Tripe, the new and the rhino is they're, they're beautiful bases. Any of those four can do uh, cheek tops, but so can 25 other bases in the collection. So when you go into bases, you 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 really you go deep. I mean, there, there's so much to offer, there's so many options. Um, and all of the bases uh, from across the board, from all the manufacturers we worked with, are very well priced. Uh, bases are, uh, it's, it's remarkable for someone like um, Pedrali. They sell 800,000 bases a year. So 800,000 bases coming out of the factory every year. It's, um, it's, it's a number to reckon. Here's the beauty of uh, the cheek tops, rectangular, square, round, um, tongue and groove. Um, in the manufacturing, it's uh, it's a it's a high quality product. Um, you see here a little bit more. You know we have the Tiffany base on on the right hand side, which is a stainless steel. The same thing for the inox in the back with the two columns and the bolt in the center. Well, you can't see the base, but the bolt is is a powder coated finish, and a bolt is has become really uh, over the last couple of years, in particular Whole Foods, because Whole Foods, uh, uh, which is uh, sold by one of the people in my office, uh, Ursula Lee Murphy, um, she uses the boat base because it can do AD, ADA bases. It has a T base that we can apply to the edge. So it doesn't take away from the ADA required 18 inches in the depth and it gives us wheelchair access, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's a that's a base to think about when you go into restaurants where they want the ADA clearance. Um, using the boat base, you can get two ADA uh, wheelchair access positions out of one table. So your five percent that you have to hit on a hundred, well, you can do it with three tables. You know, it's it's and and if you do it with three tables like the boat frame that table is gonna look exactly the same as all the other tables. Um, and it's, it's, a, uh, it's a thought process. A lot of the designers they go through, they don't want the ADA station to be separated. They don't want the ADA station to be away from everything else. It, it kind of makes the wheelchair person feel like, oh, I'm, I'm over there in the corner. That's my only place I can sit. No, you can sit with, by any table with the boat frame. It, it, it gives you access uh, and the clearance that is required by fats. Steel, steel tops. Um, very, very popular product. And 
of course, uh, the, the, the color, the rainbow of colors we are working with is just all over the place. We can do the bases, we can do the tops, we can do custom colors, we can do any color. Uh, the only um, uh, kind of like obstruction I have when I say any color is um, we do 20 the day you want them, no problem. The, the factory, they have a minimum up charge of $250. Uh, dollars. So we start a call, but if you do 10, 20 bases, I don't care. So, you know, this is just going to disappear into the picture. But you have damage to one. If you want to add another one, oops, there we go. 250 upcharge for the first table, that hurts. So I, I bring it up to designers and say, look, you can do it, no problem. We, we totally want to do it with you. But bear in mind, if you come back a little bit from now and want two more tables or want to add or you have damage or one tipped over oh, there we go you know it's 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 a custom color and there is an up charge for starting a color in production so just keep that in mind but it's it is a beauty and we do sell even though i i highly recommend people not to do it most people do it anyway because they just like that pink color that had to decorate the restaurant and that's uh, that of course is what it is you know it's, it's the it's the wow effect when you walk onto a, a uh, outdoor seating area, a deck at the yacht club or wherever you are, you know, deck at the lake, you know, and you have this beautiful, colorful furniture um, uh, contrasting the nature and, and the water and all this. It's, it's just, it's spectacular. And then that's what you want to do. I mean, you want to create wow. So the restaurants, they have that before they even get, as they said, they even they get the wow before they even see the menu or the wine list. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to create with this furniture. You know, create, create memories. That's, uh, it's, you know, I, I steal it a little bit from Crystal because she comes from the wine industry. And, and, and that's what she has been doing for years and years and years. You know, you, don't, you sit down and you create memories and people will reference things like, you remember when we were there? And, and they will say, you remember when we were in the restaurant with the pink furniture? Whoa, there you go. That's beautiful. That's free advertising. And, and we really, really have to be very mindful of that when we sell furniture, that we sell, we sell something that will create memories, that will create something people will come back to. And they will take pictures and send it to the next guy over. And once pictures start going on the internet, that again is free advertising on Yelp or Facebook or whatever you use, people want to go back. Goes, whoa, that looks fantastic. I want to go there. Where is that? You know. So, colors do that. Uh, steel will do it uh, because it's powder coated. It's powder coated exterior finish. It has uh, some structure to it. Uh, to the the finish, it has some texture to it. Uh, it uh, controls, you know, the cups and the glasses and the coffee cups from sliding off the table. Uh, whereas on the right hand side you see stainless steel, brushed stainless steel, and uh, not so much. That that surface is actually very slippery, uh, but it is a very very strong surface material. Stainless steel is that's a workhorse. You're not going to see any staining, scratching. Who cares? Because it's already brushed, you know. And it it uh, good for heat. Uh, it, it it can take heat from hot plates hot pots and pans, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a beautiful material to work with. In that sense, uh, once we start bringing into the powder coated staining, yeah, especially in the lighter colors. Uh, and once you get that ring from the red wine, done. You know, it, it will never go away. Um, the beauty of a powder coated finish is that eventually we could recoat. You could take the tops off and recoat. Um, so you can you could save and refresh, uh, but it has that little bit of drawback. You know, weather resistant. Yes, um, I, I keep saying clean mild soap and water. It kind of like it's a it's a generic mild soap and water. You know, it's it's uh, harsh materials um, on a uh, painted surface, a veneered surface, on a laminate surface. It, it, it's not gonna hurt it once or twice, you know, but uh, if you keep doing it, in particular, anything, any cleaning material that has chlorine in it. Chlorine is no bueno, it's not good. Um, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just something that you have to be mindful of, you know, if, especially if you leave it on the surface. 
you get that white looking stain on the on the material and they will like anything else never go away uh, chlorine is is it's remarkable that we use it because we actually drink it every day you know we do it's half water and uh, and it's it's uh, just a material that has to be avoided when we when we do cleaning but stain resistance uh, to some um, it, it's it's all right you know but there's a little bit of a no go in the red wine and the coffee um, pairs with Luna, Nemo, Tripe, Rhino, Stylus, all the outdoor finishes, uh, all the outdoor bases work very well with these uh, materials here. The, the, the sizing of the material is restricted because it's a press form. So you press the, the, the square, you press the rectangle, or you press the round. So the sizes we have, that's it. You know, there's there's no customization of the steel tops. Big O steel tops in uh, in outdoor finishes. Um, so it's it's a um, the, the round tops. They actually they're 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 spun. So you're spinning the the material to create this this beautiful etch, and it's very precise because it's CNC material. Examples of uh, what it can look like is the uh, Ypsilon, Nolita, and Leo table. Leo being very inexpensive, great, great table for, for outdoor. We touch base on glass, all the glass is tempered. Now you can see the table base below it. And I think in, in looking at table bases, think Metrop Metropolis. That's an Italian table frame that has been around for many, many years. It's just really beautiful. Glass tempered for safety, so if you ever break it, it's like a windshield, it will shatter, it's not gonna break and, and hurt anybody. Now you can clean with Vindex, you know, Windex, you can do whatever you want. But Metropolis and Fluxo is a couple of the tables that I would put uh, the tops on. See the, the, the Metropolis with the wood frame, elegant, it can be powder coated, it's an Escap product, They're just beautiful and it's very inexpensive. It's a table that has been around for a long, long time. When you see the sign, you kind of know it. Okay, that came from Escop. So these are the guys that were first with that. Fluxo can take the table glass top as well. Stone, quartz, marble, composite. Marble, different structures, you know, all three quarter inch material, heavy, heavy, heavy. So we have to think about overturning, tipping over, be careful what we do with the tops that we don't that create product that are dangerous uh, when they're installed. Uh, quartz. Zero staining, very, very good man-made product. It's, it takes heat resistance, it's an outdoor application, wine bar, cafe, coffee, hot food surface, absolutely a beautiful material. Quartz is used for kitchen counters, it's used in uh, dental offices and medical offices because it is, it has a, it's a very, very dense product, so it doesn't hide germs in it. Um, it's, I, I go with an, a pair with the Inox Luna, Tiffany Nemo bases that we've talked about before. Here you see it's a man-made material, it's highly polished. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a beautiful material to work with. There was, there was a couple of new manufacturers uh, it, with quartz material that are similar in, in uh, quality. One is Hanix out of the UK that has really gained a lot of traction here in the United States and being used a lot now. Marble, it's a natural stone. I say unpredictable variations, it's just because you, you send a sample over to an architect and you say, oh, I want this white top and you get it and it's dark. Yeah, there's so much vein in it. It's it just in one top and the next one is different. So it's, it's just be careful. You know, when people say they, they know, they should know when they deal with marble that it's, it's a stone, it's made by nature. And it's porous. That's the funny thing is that most people, they think that marble is, it's, it's just beautiful. It's really rock solid material, which it is, but it is porous. So it will take stains. It will stain over the years. Absolutely it will. The only way it will not stain is if you apply a wax to the top. Now we get into um, maintaining. Can you and seal it? You can seal it, it can be sealed. Yes, it can. And there is a company uh, that will do just that. It's a kind of like a film they apply to the marble top and uh, and it, it secures the top, you know, not for heat. Now you can't put heat on it anymore. Whereas if you leave it in this natural form, you can put hot pots, anything, 
fajitas, whatever on it, and it will it will it will stay. Natural stone, as you can see here in the dark and the greens, you know, just a lot of play, a lot of vein veins in it, and it's it's a beautiful product. You know, you see the veins going through the material, which is the beauty of it. You see it. You know, we use marble in a lot of our coffee tables, as you can see from the collection. Uh, it's, it's used throughout, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very popular material. I want to talk a little bit about composite material, composite marble, which is the leftover from the marble top production. When they cut the round top, they're left over with a lot of marble that is waste, not, and not anymore. Now they crush it and they pair it with resin and then polish it down. And that material is beautiful. It's good for indoor and outdoor. Zero stain, height resistance. It's an elegant material because we can control it in half inch thickness, flat edge, chamfered edge, round edges, cafe, coffee, wine bar, pool areas, anything. It, it really is a beautiful, beautiful material. Starbucks is, has used it. Peach coffee has used it. It's just because it will not stain. You know, it's, it's just a beautiful material to work with. And it has, it's so dense that when you clean it, there's no, there's nothing left on the top. So we, we pair that with a bunch of our bases. You can see, you know, Icon, Luna, Blush, Bolt, Tiffany, Nemo, Rhino. And there's only mentioning seven or eight of them. There's pretty much all the bases can go with the uh, composite top. Here you see a couple of examples. We have them in the brown zone, in the shade hue, and in the darker uh, black, and then in the gray that is by far the most popular with the that's ever so slight uh, bevel on the top edge of it so you your edge itself is only showing quarter inch even though the material is half um here you see stone you know applied to liberty very popular base and bistrot which is like that's paris all over again you know it's just retro beautiful with marbles beautiful with the uh with the uh materials oh what does it say here really oh you go thank you and this drink is on me that's it Thank you very much, guys. It's been awesome. Um, yeah, so let me see if anybody has any other questions. Yeah. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, you can take yourself off mute and ask away. I'm not sure how to. You're welcome, John. Mm -hmm. And if anybody does have anything, you can either take yourself off mute or you and we have it's, it's recorded right so it can yeah. be requested oh um yes the slides will be available um so for those of you who don't know the slides are are always available after all of our our trainings as well as the training goes to youtube 